let this information out. The most enduring experiments have been in the field of remote viewing. We got into it when we discovered that they were in it. I realized that what people can do is quiet their mind and describe the experiences that appear in your awareness. We've been investigating a phenomenon called remote viewing. We found that many individuals are able to accurately describe what's going on in distant locations, blocked from any kind of ordinary perception. Don't name it, just tell me what appears mm -hmm. in your visual field, and then draw that. Are you saying that the work you've been doing is classified? I really can't talk about uh, matters of classification, as you can imagine. My name is Russell Targ, and I'm a physicist. And so we talked about, can we do it? And um, I know that Russell Targ said, well, that's a, a nice idea. It's a collaborative composition project to create a brand new piece of music in three days. And Sam got very talented cellists who had not re remote viewed, but they were all open to the idea. And then when it came time for these cellists to actually remote view what is in this envelope, what's, what goes with this coordinate, they went into an expanded state and got impressions. <laughs> Musicians who practice day after day after day hear things as well as see things, and so they're, they have all kinds of perceptions. There was, this target was one, the, the poem was Dan's Bugs by Jim Harrison, and the picture that accompanied it was a picture that we took at our home of a dragonfly that had died but had, was imperfectly intact. He was able to set up experiences so that as we experience it, we expand that belief system, and it's about that. Reaching out to get the information is about believing that it can be done. I think what that does is allowing different parts of your brain that normally aren't being given the priority voice, giving them more voice. Maybe. So it's not a Ouija board festival. No. It's, it's a, there's a really strict protocol that these uh, viewers are using to to create a connection with the target that they haven't seen yet. So I put pictures in envelopes and, and label them with numbers that gave them coordinates, and then we set it up for the, these musicians. The target is, the coordinate is zero, two, six, two, three. And then these musicians went into a, an expanded state. So you get into a, not sleep, or even near sleep, but something between sleep and fully awake. Once they got that sound, they then took it up to the composers. Atmospheric, like... Two not opposing but interrelated forces, and at first they became, they appeared as visual lines with different colors. All of us went down into a room and then gave the, the musicians their feedback. What was the feedback? Well, they didn't know what was in the envelope. And the composition itself is very, very close. It's very descriptive of bugs. So when, playing it, listening to it kind of makes you itch. <laughs> the cellists were really hit. Uh, a couple of them wrote aircraft, different ones wrote aircraft. Um, one drew a butterfly, one had musical impressions right away and drew tr trills that sounded like this, like bugs. And then there was this giant impression of this flying something. Where does that muse come from? It's, it's all part of that, all there is. It's, it comes from somewhere. <laughs> 